All right. Um, I, I got this good question from one of my group members. And uh, he asked me very politely, he said, Sir, I, you know, if you can answer this question, it'd be great. I, I sincerely, I don't mean disrespect, but why is it you don't believe in friends? You know, friend, friend is important. We all need friends. Like uh, we say, our mother, father is our closest friend. The dog is man's best friend or your companion is your friend. But not those kind of friends, but friends, you know. Aren't we social animals? Don't we need a friend? But why is it you don't believe in friends or you don't have friends or you don't want friends? And the second question which you put, which was very apt, was uh, you always seem to have a problem with friends. Okay. So if you are having a problem with everyone, doesn't it mean that the problem is with you? And he said, sir, please don't feel bad. I'm just stating what you have said. So I thought I would answer this question. It was a good question and logically put. So first and foremost is why I don't believe in friends or why I don't want friends. See, wh whatever principles we have in life now, it comes from our experiences. Good, bad, ugly, whatever experience you have had, you form a world view of it. If the world has been nice to you, you think the world is a nice place. If you have forever been lucky and uh, you always make money, you will be a person who believes there is endless opportunity. But if you are a person who has suffered torture and pain and suffering, you will view the world through that lens, right? So in my case, I've had memories and moments where uh, friends, as you can call it, uh, they were with me during good times, but during bad times, not because they were evil people, but in bad times, either by choice or by circumstance, they were not able to be there for me. Okay, that doesn't mean to say that every single human being I've met in my life, all are bad and only I'm good. No, there have been good people also. We cannot survive if we develop the attitude or have the thinking that everyone's evil. So I've had good friends. In fact, my wife is my friend. She is a friend who I, you could say that I'm genuinely uh, nurturing and building up the relationship so that our friendship lasts forever. Okay. As long as, you know, both of us are alive. So it's not that there is no such thing as friends. But for me, I've had bad experience. Now I'll give you a couple of examples, just a few, just to make my point. Now these are not, hi, how are you, bye friends. These are friends I genuinely believed, genuinely believed were my best friends, genuinely. Okay, the first one, obviously I'll change their names. I won't give you their real names. The first one, okay, was Francis. Now I, Francis was twice my age, I was young. And I used to go to Francis's house. He was not a rich guy, uh, but I used to go to his house when I was young. Uh, young means what? I was uh, 12, 13, 14, that age. I used to go to his house for food. He used to always talk to me. We were good friends. And I used to always make it a point to visit him. Okay. However, uh, because I used to have problems with my parents, okay, he used to always give me a, like a supporting shoulder to cry on. Now, I never took money from him, nothing. But he used to always tell me, if tomorrow, any time you have a problem, or any time, don't think twice, just come to me. You stay with me, I'll take care of you. We'll manage. And it's not that he was a single guy, he had a family, but his family was back home. But he was earning, okay, decent. So I always kept that in my mind. He'll always be there for me. One fine day when I did have a problem with my parents, had a fight, decided not to talk to each other, and you know, I decided I'll run away from home and all that shit. And uh, I went to him. <laughs> I went to him and said, uh, just help me and you know, can you just give me a place to stay? And he was staying alone. It was his apartment. Lo and behold, that very day, 
he told me, see, Loy, uh, listen, you can't fight with your parents and can't stay here, then I'll have problems. <laughs> and, you know, I had a very severe fight with my parents. So I was thinking to myself, this guy used to always tell me that uh, you have any time fight with your parents and this and that. Come and, you know, imagine he's twice my age and I just always believe him. And now when I need help, he's saying no. So for me, that first time, okay, forget it. All right, that was the first experience as I can remember. My second experience, my best friend, okay? This one, we spent years together, years, huh? And uh, we were more like business partners and partners in crime and everything else. Long story short, he finally found a girl who who he wanted to marry. Okay. She was nothing great. I don't want to go too much into specifics. And uh, lo and behold, because he, he and I used to DJ together, I used to anchor shows and we used to DJ together. So, obviously, I will be the DJ and anchor for his show. Okay. For his wedding. So, as usual, being a DJ and anchor, you know, when you anchor an event or when you are an MC or a wedding for a reception and you take the lead, you have to have a meeting with the groom and bride and with the family and give them instructions. Which we had done many, many years. For many years, we had done that. And we knew the, the way to go about. So, I told my best friend, the buddy who was ready to die for, Okay, because we were so close, we literally used to stay together uh, when we were working. I told him, okay, uh, listen man, uh, I'll sit down, let me sit with you and your wifey and give instructions of how to go about, okay, and what is the plan of action, how we are going to execute the uh, wedding, the process. Now mind you, my stepbrother was also very close to me. They had, you, you know, when you book a banquet hall, the hotel by default gives you the suite. They give you the suite, wedding suite or whatever, or sometimes the presidential suite. So they were staying there. They had been given a complimentary place to stay in the hotel. And uh, my stepbrother was having a shower at his suite. The reason being we did all the setup and everything else for his wedding. So. I didn't have to use the shower and all that. So because, you know, I came directly from home. So I told him, uh, one, two hours before the function, I'll give the instructions and everything else. And I've not seen his wife, huh? Means uh, at the wedding and all that. Because I was busy trying to set up his place and all that. I was working hard. So when I told him, okay, I'll sit down with you and your wife and uh, we'll have the instructions. He told me, and I'll never forget this. He told me, you don't need to see my wife. You can tell me. I was like, what? You know, I just, I was like, huh? what? Like, you know, it's unexpected. He said, no, no, you don't see my wife. You don't talk. And my family also. Means I've met their family so many times. He literally told me, don't need to see my family. Don't need to see anyone. Don't need to. You just tell me what you want. I'll communicate to her. Imagine my stepbrother's having a shower there. Now, yes, you can say that, oh, Lloyd, because those days you were a playboy. Yes, I was a playboy, but this is my friend's wife. <laughs> and it's his wedding day. W what do you think I'm going to do? I mean, are you stupid? I, it just, it took a few seconds and then it dawned on me, this guy being family to me, he's telling me, you don't see my wife, you don't meet my wife. You just do it and... I'll tell you, really, I wanted to walk off. I do not know what he was thinking. I don't know who fed what in his head. I wanted to walk off. Let's just say, fuck off. Let your wedding just go die, you know? But I'll tell you, uh, I just let it settle down. I took one hour. I, I don't know what I told him because I was so shocked. I just told him, okay, we'll do A, B, C, D, whatever. I just walked in the hallway and I was thinking whether to walk off. <sighs> Finally, I, I did the wedding, but I didn't stay for food. I didn't stay for anything. I did the wedding and I walked off. I just said, hey man, take care. He said, okay, bye. 
the funny thing is okay that time he was all protective about his wife however after i think 5 years or 10 years his wife became i think double or triple the size she was fat as oh. i don't know her thyroid was acting funny she was so fat. he didn't mind whether even i sit on her lap when that time he made so you, you see <laughs> like this is a power of pussy <laughs> so he was the second guy ma bad experience with friends the third one this person was someone who i again trusted with my life absolutely trusted with my life meant the world to me was like a person i'd look up to we used to talk to each other literally every single day for one hour on the phone every single day we talk for one hour minimum huh? it could go on for sometimes two hours three hours what we would talk even if you ask me today i don't know but we would talk this guy who was supposed to be my best friend is a multi millionaire multi he has millions however when it came time for me to leave dubai and i also had financial issues uh, because someone cheated me of half you know, nearly half a million uh, it was a big amount because a lot of pending payments and a lot of yeah, the mistake i did was when you inform people you have to leave or you have to go then people start acting funny and they they know that you have less time i made that mistake of telling them i have less time so they were just wait let him go then within the time he can't do anything oh these guys uh, i ended up making that mistake of being transparent and a lot of people didn't pay me money so my whole plan went in a limbo i asked this multi millionaire to donate i think 27 dollars minimum at least 100 anything and i was asking everyone and there are a lot of people who gave me just at 100 bucks who knew me this so called friend of mine i asked him only 100 bucks minimum to tell you honestly from my heart of hearts i thought he would give at least 10000 dirhams forget 10000 forget 100 he stopped picking up my calls to this date to this day I do not know why he did that. But the only thing I can speculate is, I guess, for him money was important. Imagine until that day where I asked him, we had spoken to each other for years and years. I don't know. Maybe he was going through some financial problems, which I do not know. But twenty-seven dollars for someone who you knew for five, six years. Okay. I'll give you just two last examples, okay? Uh, once again, another rich guy. Uh, this guy was Muslim from India. He, his wife, his children, they all loved me like a family. Or you know, I wouldn't say it was fake. They were always there. They were always talking. And in his case, he helped me. He helped me multiple number of times. Okay. and um, in his case i also try to pay him back but he used to always say no because he was well off but he wanted me to convert to islam okay he really wanted and it was not because he was bad or he believed in his god and he believed in his religion and uh, i have told you this story before he even was ready to pay money literally and i put this on my facebook post uh, without his name that a friend offered to pay me half a million uh you know to get my tattoos removed and to convert to islam okay but he would obviously not pay half a million i to he would pay for the tattoo removal process the face at least the face and head and uh, after i would get that removed then you know he'd start giving me money slowly because he was a wise man he knew that if you just give money people spoil he'd give me money slowly 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 every month he, he was a man of his word plus he offered me to open up a business where he would undertake all the overheads and cost plus he would uh, support me in getting staff and all that everything you take he just wanted me to do well because he already had a set up business he was very well off he was slightly older in fact uh, when i told him i i wanted to leave dubai he told me okay you go to india okay go to india i will 
you stay in one of the flats I have and all that. But there was a condition. My ex-wife was Indian, whom I was not in love with. He didn't want me to divorce her. That was first condition. Second condition, it was uh, he didn't. He wanted me to convert to Islam. And obviously, third one shouldn't go to Thailand. Should go to India. If I listen to these three things of his, he'll give me money. He'll give me support, financial help, five years. He had enough money, and I'll tell you, he would honor his word. He was that kind of a guy. But I, I told him, can't do that. I, I just don't want to do something that I cannot. Okay. Very close. We are very close. Okay. And it's not that I used to only take. I also used to give my time and you know whatever I could from training to from public speaking to training his kids and all that. However, I told him no to Islam. I said no to not divorcing my wife. I divorced. And obviously, I didn't want to go to India because I I was not comfortable. Even if he gave me free rent, free money, this, that, whatever. So I moved to Thailand. Guess what? After I came here, he would never pick up my calls. I mean, you're supposed to be like family, right? We ate together. You told me I was like brother and this and that. Just because I refused to convert to Islam. Because he has his conditions. Even phone call you can't take. Just a phone call, even a message you can't reply. And so, finished, vanished. Why? Because I refused to convert. Why? Because I didn't do what he wanted me to do. And that time when I was there, obviously he could meet me, I could meet him and he would uh, take my services for uh, branding or public speaking. But now as of no use, so why to keep in touch? Funny, right? Let me give you one last, one final example. This guy is a, he's known as a coach in Dubai, businessman. Multiple businesses. He was also someone who I used to uh, call his friend. He's not my best friend because uh, I was not very comfortable with his uh, extravagant lifestyle. He had multiple Rolls Royce and Bentleys, and he he literally just to show off on social media used to take the helicopter <laughs> and private jets. He had a lot of money. But he was living like an extravagant life. Very rich. He had the girls and, and he was a very... Like he was not a known coach, but he had premier clients. And the reason I, I was close to him was... I looked up to him as someone who I could learn a lot of things from. You will not believe he wanted me to join him, which I refused. He wanted me to partner with him, which I said no. Because I knew that partnership would not work. He used to literally tell me, Loy, I'll send you my Rolls Royce, I'll send you my Bentley. You choose a car, I'll pick you up from Sarja all the way to Dubai. You want, I'll give you my office space. Let's work together. He tried to tempt me with many ways. He used to even tell me, come on the private jet. But see, always keep in mind, when someone who's super rich and you're not at that level and you try to start enjoying those perks and benefits, you become lower. You should only take or take something and return it back. Okay. So I never took anything for free, but we did some projects together. And uh, he would pay me, you know, for what I've done. Not a penny more, not a penny less, because he was a businessman. Fine. So I got, so everything was fine. And, uh, you know, whenever he used to call me, I used to attend his call whenever I wanted, uh, like, his presence or talk to him, he would take my call. Fine. Now imagine, remember what I told you. It was a guy who used to send me his Rolls Royce and Bentley just to pick me up. Means whenever he wanted, but I would say I'll, I'll come by myself in my small car. So we used to do projects. Now this guy was so uber rich, same the Thailand problem when I got cheated. I informed him about it and I informed him I'm going. He was like, hey, no problem, Loy, Loy, uh, 
anything, anything for you, brother. Blah, blah, blah. Always there. Now, remember, in this case, he was not my best friend, but he was someone who I called friend. And we used to have work together or whatever. And so, he told me, uh, Aloy, you, I, I told him, can you help me with something? Anything. Because I, you know, I had already made the transition to go to Thailand and now people had cheated me. He said, just come down my office. I'll give you something. Okay, he could have transferred it via bank, but I thought, okay, he wants to give me personally to show respect or whatever. I took, I borrowed a car of my friend. I drove down to Sheikh Zayed Road. And, uh, you know, uh, where the Emirates Stars was 2000. Uh, I can't get the name of the building. It's a pretty majestic building. Century Tower or something, I don't know, really big. His office was there at the topmost floor. Very rich guy. So when I landed there, okay, uh, obviously simple clothes. So the security stopped me. Yes, how can we help you? And I said, I want to meet Mr. So-and-so. No, wait. So he called him up because a high security area, because all premier high five people was in that office. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, no issues. So the security guy, I think he was African. Big, huge, burly guy. So then he spoke to me and I said, yes, Mr. Loy, uh, your law, Mr. Loy, I said, yes, he gave me a box, big carton, huh? carton, like really big. I was like, oh, what is this? I was like completely shocked. Wow, this guy's given me such a big thing. Like I just wanted little money has gone out of his way to give a So, But I was confused because I just wanted money as I was leaving the country. I didn't want more stuff to carry. But then I was like, okay, fine, he gave me a big box. Let's see. I took the big box. Kind of felt a little heavy, not very heavy. Okay, I took it in one hand and I walked out. I was not too sure what it was. So I took it to my car. I went, I sat down inside, a small car. And then, you know, very curious, I opened the tape and obviously they had put tape and all. Now imagine, Going through a tough time, the friend is a multi-millionaire, has Rolls Royce, rents out private jets and shows he's a multi whatever. And he has an office in some of the most premium places. A person who's millionaire over times over, he's not my best friend, he's like a person we have done events and work together. Who is to tell me he'll send me a Rolls Royce just to pick me up. Okay. He's ready to give me his Rolls Royce. When? I was of use to him. So finally I opened the box and lo and behold, inside the box, can you guess what I got? You can guess? I opened the box and inside that was, you know, Lay's crisp or chips you call it, Lay's crisps, Lay's uh, juice, you know, orange juice, you know, the pack and uh, some milk. You know, like, you know, when you you go to the supermarket, you get that. That's it. I really have no idea to this date what he was thinking or what message he got. I just, I was stunned. You're giving me juice and chips. I don't know what what message he got or what he... I just took that, I... You know, I was like... I... You know, I'll tell you honestly, I, I didn't know whether to dump it or give it back to that guy. Just took it with me. When I went to my building, I gave it to the building watchman. And I went home. See, overall, what I want to say is, I'm not trying to say these people are bad. Okay, maybe I'm bad and they don't owe me anything. One thing I've learned through life, you have no right to demand or expect anything, no right. So where it is my fault was I expected help, I expected freebies. As you can say, no self-entitlement, I expected, so I'm wrong over there. But now having said that, see, I admit where I'm wrong. 
The second thing which I'll admit is maybe I'm not a good person. Maybe I'm not likable. Maybe I'm not nice. Okay. But when I was useful, they were nice to me. When I was beneficial to them, they were kind to me. When they had something that they wanted, they gave me a lot of sweet talk. But the day I was of no use to them or didn't do what they wanted or, you know, they didn't need me. They showed me a side of theirs, which I never saw. And uh, I realized like, oh, wow, okay. I mean, why did I call them even my friend? In fact, I didn't give this example. This is an Emirati guy who was my friend. Best friend, huh? we were like this. The girl who, my girl, my girlfriend, after I dumped her, after we broke up, we just broke up, didn't dump her. The very next day, I found her from someone else, he went to bed with her. Oh, wow. And that was the end of our friendship. See, overall, maybe my selection process was bad, or maybe I am bad, or maybe it's wrong of me to accept, which I say 100%, yes, it's wrong of me to expect. But when people give you sweet talk, when people say, I'm there for you, we are like brothers. When people call you to the house to eat food with them and call you family. But in your good times only. But all this changes in your bad times then. Why do you need friends, man? Tell me. Who, who needs friends when they are only with you in your good times? That make any sense, right? So that is why for me, see, you learn through your experience. That is why for me now, friends is for that moment. As long as you're useful, I'm useful. Friends, after the transaction is over, I don't expect anything. You can't expect anything. And you go your way, I go my way. If you want to help, you help. Don't want to help, don't help. But that's about it. It's like, you know, when you go to a prostitute to have sex, if you have money, she'll go all over you. She'll put her hand, oh baby, and she'll touch you down there. And I'll put it in my mouth. I'll put it anywhere. I love you only. Okay. But one day if you tell her I don't have any money, she's going to be like, why should I even touch you? Disgusting. Because I have to feed myself. Fuck off. I take relationships like that. You can say that, oh, Lord, so you're a prostitute. Fine, no problem. Say that. Or you could say, I'm the guy who pays money. Either case. <sighs> relationships are like that. I know what you'll ask me now. Some of you who think far ahead. So, Lloyd, what is your relationship with your wife? Same, same. As I don't expect anything out of her. As long as I can take care of her, provide for her, I'm loyal to her. I give her the best in her from my side, and she does the same. She's loyal, she's faithful, she gives me the best. Our relationship can work together when we work together towards a common goal. But if there's no loyalty, no faithfulness, doesn't we don't listen to each other, we fight. She goes her way, I do my thing my way. Why do you need the relationship? And like I always tell you, every single day I have to prove myself to her by earning money. Every single day she has to prove herself to me by working hard to the, for the family. That's our relationship. The day we forget our place and we forget our duties, you don't need to have it. This is my story, my logic, and my experience. And I'll just conclude by telling you this one thing. For those of you who still believe in friends, I can challenge you this. The day you lose your money, the day you lose your power, the day you lose your social standing, you'll come to know what I said is true. The only person who may remain with you is either your mother, father, or your spouse. That's it. All your 5,000 friends on Facebook and on your phone will amount to nothing. Maybe your dog will stay, but nobody else. Maybe not your own children also. Hmm. That's how the world is. The daughter may say, see dad, my husband is not comfortable with you. Or the husband may say, see my wife, I have to take care. Like that movie, Bhagban. Anyway, 
This is what I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Good, bad, ugly. Love to hear from you. This is me signing off.